For nearly the last 30 years, the Subaru Impreza has carried the torch for being the most affordable model in Subaru's North American lineup. And for 2024, there's an all new sixth generation. However, for this new version, Subaru decided to do things a little differently. They put a higher priority on the far better selling Crosstrek, which allowed Subaru engineers to basically reposition the Impreza. If you guys want the Impreza sedan or a manual transmission, they have both been discontinued for 2024. And Subaru has also brought back the iconic 2.5 RS trim, which we haven't seen on an Impreza for nearly the last uh, 20 years. So as you can see this week, Subaru has loaned me this fully loaded 2024 Impreza 2.5 RS. And the big question I want answered, if you guys are looking for an affordable all-wheel drive mainstream compact car and you wouldn't be caught dead in an SUV, how does the all-new 2024 Subaru Impreza stack up? Stay tuned to find out. So before we start talking about the all new styling for this sixth generation model, I thought I'd pop the hood and show you guys what's powering this thing. Now, unlike the previous generation, Subaru now offers a choice of two different gas engines, a smaller two liter four cylinder, flat four of course, or this larger 2.5 liter direct injection boxer flat four. Now, even though this engine is new to the Impreza, we've seen this engine in the Crosstrek and several other Subaru models for years. It's part of their FB engine family. It's a 2.5 liter gasoline direct injection flat four, and it makes about 30 more horsepower versus the base two liter at 182 horsepower and 178 pound feet of torque. This is actually a pretty good amount of power for a vehicle in this class. It actually makes a little bit more power versus the Honda Civic with its turbocharged engine, a little bit less power versus the Mazda to three with a 2.5 liter engine, but more power, of course, versus a Toyota Corolla. Again, the Crosstrek or the Impreza only comes standard with Subaru's latest generation of symmetrical all-wheel drive. This is one of the most affordable compact mainstream cars that you can get standard with all-wheel drive. And like I said earlier, the manual transmission is gone. The take rate was very low along with the sedan. Most people at Subaru tells us ended up buying the CVT hatchback, so that's what they're keeping around. Uh, fuel economy is rated at 26 in the city, 33 on the highway. That's actually the same fuel economy as the Crosstrek. This vehicle is designed to run on regular gas. It does have a much larger 16.6 gallon gas tank now. That's an increase versus the 13 gallon tank in the previous generation. That does improve the range, Subaru says, to just over 500 miles on the highway, which is pretty impressive if you guys can be restrained with your right foot. Uh, in terms of the performance, Subaru doesn't quote a 0-60 to 60 time. We'll see what we can get out on our actual equipment. It should have a top speed of just under 130 miles an hour. And as this vehicle sits, it weighs in at just over 3,300 pounds. So it's about 100 pounds heavier versus the previous generation. Closing the hood, let's go ahead and talk about the exterior styling of the all new Cross or Impreza. I keep calling it a Crosstrek, but this is an Impreza. Uh, and if you guys are wondering if this is a full redesign, I don't blame you because the styling of the vehicle looks almost like a heavy refresh. It's technically still built on the Subaru Global product architecture. However, Subaru says it's about 10% stiffer this year thanks to a lot more structural uh, adhesive and welding and whatnot. So it's got a much more refined, more premium feel to it. You can see all all Imprezas come standard with the company's steering adaptive uh, full LED headlights. You can see on this RS version, Subaru claims it has a premium LED. I'm not entirely sure what it what changes about it, but they are, again, swiveling adaptive. They're steering responsive, and you can see you have uh, the signature C-shaped LED daytime running light and LED turn signal. Higher, the sport and up trims will come with LED fog lights, which is nice. This is a huge upgrade over the previous generation, which forced you to buy the fully loaded limited trim to get the steering responsive LED headlights. All of them had halogens, uh, so this is, again, a nice upgrade to get that as standard equipment. You can see the latest Subaru hexagonal grille has gone frameless. You can see the RS trim has some nice gloss black accents. There's also an unpainted black area for the lower front splitter. And overall, compared to the Crosstrek, which is the SUV version, the Impreza definitely has a much cleaner appearance because of the lack of cladding. So if you guys hate the cladding that you get all over the Crosstrek and the increased in ground clearance, you don't need it, you're gonna obviously wanna take a look at the Impreza, which has a much more sportier vibe. Now, Subaru basically says that the overall length and the dimensions of the current generation or the prior generation were perfect. So the wheelbase stays the same at 105.1. It did get a smidge longer at 176.2. 
uh, and also a smidge wider at like just over 70 inches. So literally just maybe 0.5 uh, or less inches in increase, so it's not really that much different. Uh, the suspension has been tweaked. You still have a four wheel independent suspension. You can see the sport and up trims will come with an 18 inch wheel. You can get a 16 inch wheel with hubcaps or an optional alloy. On the base version, you can see when you guys go for the bigger wheels, you have a 22540 R18 tire. The Sport and RS trim also has an upgraded brake. This is a 12.4 inch rotor and an 11.2 inch rotor in the rear. Four wheel disc brakes, you have a smaller one inch size rotor if you guys go for the base version. All Imprezas have a little over five inches of ground clearance versus the 8.7 that you get with the Crosstrek. And as you can see, no ugly fender cladding or wheel arch moldings. And then you can see here the RS versions get this really cool badge which uh, resemble the horizontally opposed pistons from the engine along with the RS kind of spelled in between the two pistons. You have a black painted side mirror. These are not power folding, but you do have a, a integrated LED turn signals, which is nice. You can see a lot of the chrome has been blacked out. There's also a sunroof that my tester has as part of an option package for 2,200 bucks. And overall, if you guys want to add a roof rack, um, Subaru says they offer that from the accessory. There's the mounting points for it. Uh, a lot of Subaru owners tend to like to put things on the roof and kind of give it that more rugged appearance to it. Now, looking at the rear of the profile of the vehicle, you can see looks identical, of course, to the Crosstrek minus all of that hideous cladding. Uh, it's just a much more cleaner look. I get some hints of Mazda 3 in the design. The new taillights of the Impreza and the Crosstrek, I'm not really the biggest fan. It's got a kind of like a, that C-shaped look that Honda was doing on the Accord for the previous generation. The turn signal, as you can see, is an incandescent, but you have LED accents for the actual taillight assembly. The reverse light should be just an incandescent. Uh, as usual, Subaru tends to go a little overboard on the badging. I really wish they would clean up the Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive badge. I do like the RS badge there. The Impreza badge, eh, not really necessary to me. And for the sportier model, I'm surprised to see there's no visible exhaust tips on this car. It's actually hidden underneath the bumper. You do have that uh, slightly more sportier rear skirt, or rear diffuser area, and then you have this massive reflector light here, although uh, it's better versus, versus Subaru doing a fake vent, which is kind of nice. You do have a slightly uh, larger rear spoiler on this model, along with a rear, an actual rear wiper, which is nice. And then just like the Crosstrek, uh, this vehicle does not offer a power lift gate, but it is, again, a hatchback. The sedan is gone. And basically the cargo space is the same. You have just over 20 cubic feet of space with the second row seats or with the seats up. F flip them down and you get a little over 50 cubic feet of space, which is pretty good, actually. This is uh, on par or this is more than what you're going to get from the Toyota Corolla hatchback and about the same as what you're going to get from the Honda Civic hatchback. You can see there is a little bit of storage underneath uh, back here. And then there's also some underfloor storage. Subaru decides to give you a fix a flat kit. It looks like an air compressor, but you do have a jack, which kind of leads me to believe this vehicle does have a spare, but it looks like it doesn't. But uh, there could be space for one. So if you want to add that feature, you may be able to do that from the aftermarket or perhaps even a dealer accessory. So now that we've talked about the exterior of the redesigned Impreza, let's go ahead and hop inside and show you guys the all new interior. Before we do that, let me show you guys the key fob. You can see if you guys go for the sport and up trims, I believe you come or you get Subaru's intelligent access key uh, with push button start. You can see this is their current key fob. It's got the usual lock, unlock, open up the trunk, although this is not a power lift gate and a panic feature. I believe if you have access to the Subaru Starlink app, you should be able to uh, remote start this vehicle through your smartphone as well. As I approach the vehicle, you can see very conventional type door handles. There's a little two lines there on the door handle that will lock the door. Uh, Subaru does not offer the walk away auto lock feature. I really hope that they consider offering that. That's something that a lot of brands are doing. That's just a very convenient touch. If I touch the back of the door handle with the key fob on me, it will also then unlock the door. Now, I hope you guys like a black interior because, be, because Subaru only offers it basically in sport or RS trim. I haven't seen the base trim offerings yet. Uh, you basically get a combination of black or black with these red accents. You can see it's also a cloth seat as well. Subaru used to offer leather on the limited trim, but the limited is no more, so you can't get leather on the Impreza anymore, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, you do get two-stage heated seats, and then my tester has the uh, eight-way power driver's seat, four-way manual seat, um, no uh, memory seats. Remember, this is an Impreza. It's on the low end of the totem pole. 
Uh, you do have two-way lumbar, which is nice. I think it's actually the first time that the Impreza has gotten an actual lumbar adjustment. You can see the pedals, they are aluminum, the sport pedals, which definitely gives it a sportier vibe. And then you can see the door panels have this nice soft cloth, padded leatherette over here, hard touch plastic here with more of that uh, black uh, plastic trim, which tries to look like a dark aluminum look. You have one touch auto up down for the front windows, but not for the rear. And then the controls feel high quality and tactile. The Harman Kardon stereo is optional, part of a $2,200 package. It's now 10 speakers as opposed to eight. And it sounds good. It's about what you expect in a vehicle in this segment. Now, getting inside the new Impreza, it has that lower step in height because again, it's about three and a half inches lower in ground clearance compared to a cross track. As I get in and shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk and you're greeted with a pretty familiar interior, especially if you guys are used to a lot of Subaru vehicles. It's not that much different in here. Now, starting the vehicle up, you can see the gauges do a nice sweep. There's a 4.2 inch LCD in the center between the analog speedometer and tachometer. Subaru still does not do a fully digital instrument cluster, which I'm hoping they'll add in the future. The steering wheel surprisingly looks like it's from this previous generation. It doesn't look all that different. You do have some nice red stitching, which is nice. Um, you have controls here for the eyesight, for your audio controls. You have paddles on the wheel to control the CVT, which mimics eight virtual ratios. The steering wheel itself offers a manual tilt and telescoping adjustment, offers a good amount of adjustability and range. And then the materials, you can see hard touch plastic on this portion over the instrument panel hood, slightly padded over here on the passenger side. Uh, it's rubberized over here, but hard on over the airbag uh, cover, more of that uh, black plastic trim that tries to look like a combination of aluminum. And then most Imprezas, if you guys go for the Sport and Up, will have the new 11.6 inch display. This is a touchscreen. It now has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Previously, the Impreza used to only offer the largest screen, which was an eight inch display. If you guys go for the base, you'll have two seven inch displays that are two separate screens, which it looks much cleaner to just combine it into one nearly 12 inch screen. Uh, but this again resembles a lot the new WRX, the new Outback, uh, the refreshed Ascent also has it. So I think the last Subaru that doesn't have the bigger display is now basically the BRZ and of course the Forester, which we probably are gonna see that soon in the Forester as well. Um, this display, you can see the software hasn't really changed much. I do love the wireless Apple CarPlay aspect. I also love how it takes up the entire screen. Um, but I definitely noticed when the vehicle first starts up, the software lags a little bit. It takes some time for it to catch up. And then there are also times where my phone would randomly disconnect from the CarPlay when I was driving. Um, it would still shake CarPlay here, but I would touch it and it wouldn't go back to the CarPlay. So that was kind of a minor software glitch, which Subaru can fix obviously with over there updates. Going back to the home display here, you can see this vehicle does not offer embedded GPS. That was something that you could get in the prior generation, but most people are using the navigation from your phone anyways. I like how the auto start stop defeat button is actually built into the screen you've got physical climate buttons in addition to a volume and a tuning knob which is nice um, and then you can also go into here and go into more climate functions your heated seats are also physical buttons so they're not buried into the screen which they do that in the outback so that's definitely nice although i haven't tried out the refreshed outback this is also i believe the first subaru model to get a wireless phone charger from the factory you can get it for as a dealer accessory for years but this is the first one from the factory i think it's standard on the sport and up trims if i believe if I remember correctly and then you can see when I put the vehicle into reverse, you can see there's your backup camera. It doesn't take up the entire screen. It does have trajectory and distance markers, uh, but no top down 360 camera. It's not available. Remember, this is on the lower end of the scale for them. Uh, this here controls the Lineartronic CVT. You have an electronic parking brake. Uh, you have your cup holders here, a 12 volt, and then you have two USB charging ports along with an aux port. So you have a USB-C and a USB-A. Padded center console here, which this doesn't slide, but if you open this up, you can see it offers a good amount of storage, uh, which is nice. The seats, for them being cloth, have a nice premium feel to them. I also love the red, but again, you can't get a lighter color if you guys want like a gray or a beige or brown, Subaru does not offer that on the Impreza. These are nice, uh, nicely bolstered. The heated seat function works well. But again, for those of you who want leather, you'll have to go to the aftermarket, open up the glove box. You can see it's pretty big. It's a bin style. It's damped, but not lined with felt. No auto dimming rear view mirror. That is a dealer accessory if you want it. And then you can see here the map lighting doesn't have LEDs. You can upgrade that yourself or through the dealer. Uh, the sunroof is part of a $2,200 option package. It tilts and it opens up completely. Nothing super special. Subaru doesn't offer a pan or roof on this vehicle. No heads up display either, uh, but overall it's still comfortable. It's still really easy to see out of. 
Uh, the new screen definitely looks impressive. The software just needs an upgrade. And then the Harman Kardon stereo sounds good as well. So overall, it's definitely still a nice feeling cabin. It just doesn't have you know, some of the luxury feel or the really, really high tech feel that you might get out of some competitors. But let's go ahead and hop into the back seat of this Impreza, which uh, the wheelbase basically stayed the same. So you have uh, the same legroom back here, around 36 and a half inches of legroom, which is uh, definitely not tops in the class, but it's a good amount. So once I get back here and shut the door, you can see for somebody my height at five foot seven, this is definitely comfortable. I can find lots of foot space. There is a hump that intrudes on the center passenger. Uh, and then in terms of the headroom space, you can see it's actually pretty good, at least for somebody my height. Uh, if you're over six feet, you might find the sunroof takes up some space. No rear seat air vents back here, but you do have two USB charging ports, an A, an A and a C, um, which is nice. You only have one storage pocket in the passenger side. And then uh, there's an armrest that folds down that gives you two cup holders. The materials back here are hard touch plastic. So in the front, you had cloth covering this area, but at least, at least it still is padded right here where your elbows would rest, which is nice. The seats, uh, they basically fold down via this little lever, so you can fold them down into 60-40. Although, as you can see, it's not a completely flat floor. It actually lifts up, it raises up a little bit when you have these seats down. But overall, with 36 and a half inches of legroom, this is pretty much on par with the class. I would just like to see Subaru add some rear seat air vents back here to make the rear seat passengers a little bit more comfortable. So when there's an all new version of the Crosstrek and WRX, you better believe that the base car, the Impreza, is also going to be redesigned. And while I didn't get a chance to drive this vehicle out uh, last month uh, during the media drive, it's because I was actually committed to another program. Subaru was kind enough to actually leave me the car for a full week. And this one here is the top of the line model. It's the Impreza 2.5 RS. Now we actually haven't seen the RS badge here in the States uh, on an Impreza vehicle for almost 20 years. I think 2005 was the last time we saw an RS badge on the Impreza. And it's kind of always been like that stepping stone before we go into WRX. Now, Subaru obviously hasn't confirmed a WRX hatch is coming, but for 2024, the Impreza sedan is gone, which kind of gives me the clue that they are considering seriously bringing back a WRX hatch. Now, this car, some may argue, is a heavy refresh, but Subaru says it's an all new model. It's the sixth generation. And we haven't seen the 2.5 engine in this car in almost 20 years, like I said. So with 30 extra horsepower, uh, versus the two liter. Let's go ahead and see what we can get zero to 60 wise. Now I have tested this engine in the regular cross trek uh, and I got 7.9 seconds. Let's see what we can get in this car. So we'll brake torque it, it's in sport. Seven point four eight seconds. So that's a smidge quicker. Uh, actually, almost a half a second quicker. I'm sorry. I got seven point nine, if I'm remembering correctly, in the Crosstrek two point five, which was a Crosstrek Sport. This car is lighter than the Crosstrek. Uh, it weighs in at just a smidge over thirty three hundred pounds. It's about one hundred and fifty pounds heavier versus the old Crosstrek, which also had the two liter engine. In reality, the Crosstrek's weight has gone up by about. 100 pounds, so it's pretty negligible. Uh, but I'd say that performance is very respectable. It's gonna be enough power for most people. Is it going to satisfy those of you, you know, who have a WRX, who wanna go for a, a WRX hatch? Obviously not. Uh, but there is something quite satisfying about this vehicle, and I think a lot of enthusiasts who are looking for something like this will definitely appreciate it. Now, let's go ahead and try it one more time here. I'm not going to brake torque it this time. We're just going to floor it from a stop uh, and see what we can get here. It's still in sport mode, and this is slightly uphill. It feels really responsive off the line. It'll hold the shifts, or the gear, the the revs, 7.96 seconds there. Um, again, this is more slightly uphill, uh, so it's about a half a second slower versus when I brake torqued it back there. Uh, most of you probably won't brake torque it. In the real world, you'll be looking at just a smidge under eight seconds, zero to 60, which is perfectly respectable. It's gonna be enough power for most people. And the beauty thing, the beauty about the all new uh, Impreza platform is it's still built on the Subaru global architecture. However, they have stiffened it by about 10%, they say. It's all due to the increased structural adhesive that they've added. Uh, and they've also improved the refinement. This engine has new uh, motor mounts. It's just much more smoother. It's less noisy. They've also upgraded the aerodynamics of the vehicle, so it's less susceptible to crosswinds. And I noticed that all in the Crosstrek. I'm noticing that all in the 
Impreza. I also definitely like how nimble this car feels. I mean, the Crosstrek basically feels like this as well. You just sit up higher. But this vehicle with like 5.1 inches of ground clearance, it feels like a compact car, a regular car. If you want an actual car with all wheel drive, this is one of the few vehicles out there. This car and the Mazda 3 are the only vehicles that really offer all wheel drive without having to go to a performance version of the vehicle. And that's kind of a great thing. Like all wheel drive is a little hard to find in the economy compact car segment, in the mainstream segment at least. Uh, and this, the Impreza, the new one, is also one of the least expensive models. But yeah, going around some corners here, the steering is sharp. It's got that new dual pinion steering from the WRX. It's really sharp, quick, responsive. The suspension stays nice and flat. It still has a four-wheel independent suspension, unlike the Mazda 3, which went to a torsion beam rear axle, which uh, most of you will probably say is a cheap out for Mazda. You can see the Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive puts the power down with very little drama. The CVT will mimic shifts there, uh, which technically slows down the performance, but the engine gets noisy when you start pushing it, but most people won't push it that hard in day-to-day -day driving. I just do it for demonstration purposes. I wanna feel the vibration. The one thing I do, don't feel actually is the vibration. There's very little vibration coming back through the pedals, through the steering wheel, through the shifter. That's what you always noticed in the old one. And this one here is just kind of gone. Let's try it here one more time. I wanna see if I can get a consistent time. Brake torque. Come on. 7.5 here, and this is basically a flat level road surface. So pretty respectable performance. Um, do I wish this car was quicker? Sure, but that's not the mission of the Impreza. Uh, I really hope Subaru decides to bring back a WRX hatchback. I think they could stuff the 2.4 in this car and give us another hatch, that would be wonderful. Um, but overall, as a, a daily driver, this is where the car really excels. Now I'm actually gonna switch the vehicle into its intelligent mode. So we'll take it out of sport. There's two drive modes, there's sport and there's intelligent. Turn the wheel here, put your foot down. This is how most people are gonna drive the vehicle. So just kind of drive it normally. We'll get up to speed, get up to the speed limit. You can see the engine kind of sits at around 3,500 RPM when you're accelerating. I'm literally just tapping the accelerator like a quarter of the way and it gets up to speed just fine. That's the thing about this engine. It's got nice amounts of torque, 178 pound feet of torque. That CVT puts the engine right in the meat of the power band and this vehicle also has gotten quieter. I like how uh, quiet in terms of road noise, it doesn't have much, not much in terms of wind noise, just some of that engine noise a little bit when you start pushing it. But when you don't push it, this car feels refined. It feels like a more premium car, even though the price tag hasn't gotten more premium. Subaru's legendary EyeSight driver assist technology has been upgraded, of course. It's now got three cameras. It now has the ability to uh, work a little bit better in terms of when you're in bumper to bumper traffic, it helps you keep centered in the lane. I actually use the adaptive cruise control when I drove this vehicle back to my house from the airport and it works wonderfully. Uh, it keeps you centered in the lane. It, follows the car in front of you at a good distance, although I, most adaptive crews aren't quite, le are quite fast enough for me. Uh, they leave a little bit of a gap, too much of a gap where people cut you off, so it's personally something that I don't like. Um, but the seats in this vehicle also are comfortable, and they better be, which um, because if you guys had an old Impreza, you used to be able to get leather on the limited trim. Subaru has dropped the limited, so now you're limited to basically just this cloth seat. If you want leather, if you want a light color leather, you used to be able to get that on the limited. Now you just get this black interior with the red accents, which look it looks good, but. If you guys want leather, again, you're gonna have to either go to the aftermarket or go to a different brand because Subaru doesn't offer leather on this vehicle. In terms of the fuel economy, it's rated to get 2633, which is actually the same as the Crosstrek. I was expecting this car to get a little bit better gas mileage. And in my week's worth of testing, I have been averaging around 24 miles to the gallon. Um, that is mixed driving. Uh, that is also you know, driving around and stop and go traffic. That is not great gas mileage. I actually was hoping this car would do better. On the highway, the best I could get it to do was around 29. That's in my testing. Your mileage may vary if you guys have a little bit more of a lighter foot. You don't drive quite as fast. I was going about 75 uh, to 80 miles an hour in that test, uh, and it tends to use a little bit more fuel. So if you slow down to, you know, 20 or, or 65 miles an hour, you may be able to do the 33 that Subaru is claiming or that the EPA says, and combine that with a larger 16.6 gallon and fuel tank and Subaru claims you could do 500 miles on a full tank. That is theoretically possible. I've only been showing around 400 in my testing again with my slightly lower EPA numbers. So could Subaru do a hybrid version? Yeah, I think there's room for a hybrid. I mean, just look at Honda. They're gonna bring back
back the Civic Hybrid. There's the Corolla Hybrid now as well, uh, which Toyota just made some upgrades to. <clears throat> There's the Elantra Hybrid as well. So uh, it would be nice if Subaru would give us a hybrid option. But again, for those of you who want all-wheel drive, this is one of the cheapest uh, vehicles out there in the mainstream segment that's also a small car uh, and I also think that Subaru's done a really great job in making the Impreza feel a lot more premium this year but they've managed to do it without increasing the price tag and that is an incredible feat. So after spending a full week with the all-new sixth generation Impreza I have to say this vehicle is definitely a competent small mainstream sedan or hatchback, I'm sorry, especially if you guys want all-wheel drive at an affordable price. This is a very important model for Subaru because it is the their entry-level model. The Crosstrek is their best-selling vehicle with sales over 155,000. Last year, Subaru only did around 31,000 Imprezas. So if you look at the sales mix of the Impreza, uh, you look at the Impreza, you look at the Crosstrek, you, you look at the WRX, this car last year accounted for about 15% of sales. The Crosstrek accounted for about 70% 75% of sales while the remaining 10% were WRX STI sales. So obviously this model here doesn't have quite the higher priority like the Crosstrek, but because the Crosstrek is built off of this car, it's also a very important model. And I have to say, if you guys don't want the higher seating position, you wouldn't be caught dead in an SUV-like vehicle with all of that extra cladding. This is definitely going to suffice for those of you who are considering maybe like a Honda Civic, a Toyota Corolla, a Mazda 3, because of the fact that it comes standard with symmetrical all-wheel drive. The new 2.5 liter engine in the Impreza definitely gives it a little bit more performance. Does it give it the enough performance to pull over somebody who, or to pull in somebody who has a WRX of the prior generation and they want to get a hatchback? No. 0 to 60 in 7.5 seconds is perfectly acceptable, but it's about two seconds slower versus what you're going to get out of the performance of a WRX. Now keep in mind, I also haven't driven the newest WRX with the Subaru Performance Transmission, which is technically a CVT. Uh, in terms of fuel economy, I do think Subaru needs to work on that because I got in my testing just shy of 25 mpg. I imagine those of you who own this vehicle who have a little bit more conservative driving habits may be able to do better, but I would love to see them do a hybrid option. In terms of the tech and the interior, again, they played it safe. I do like the 11.6 inch screen with now wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. However, the software definitely needs an upgrade. The interior itself, thankfully, is comfortable. The back seat has enough space. The trunk has enough space. The seats are also comfortable. Although I do think that they should consider offering the limited trim again, because the limited trim was kind of more, again, of that luxury-oriented trim. Not everybody's going to want the sporty 2.5 RS with the black interior with the red accents. So I think as part of you know offering a little bit more variety, Subaru should consider doing a limited trim once again. But really, what makes the, the Impreza so appealing is the affordable price tag, because if you guys want this vehicle, it starts at 25, 29, it starts at $22,995. I'm completely tongue twisted today, which is about $2,700 more expensive versus the prior generation. Now, previously Subaru offered a manual which dropped the price by $1,300. So if you add the automatic, of the previous generation, the price delta is really only $1,400. So it's really not that much more expensive. Just shy of 23 grand makes this the most affordable all-wheel drive compact mainstream car that you can buy. Most of you are probably gonna go up to the sport trim. Uh, the sport trim gives you a lot more features. It gives you the 18-inch wheels, a much better look on the outside, uh, better tech on the inside with the bigger 11.6-inch screen. That's gonna come in at 24,995. Again, under 25 grand, really cheap, especially when today's average new car transaction price is nearly $50,000. This model here starts at around 27895 So again, two grand more expensive versus the Sport. With options that my tester has, you're looking at just under or just over $31,000. So 31 grand sounds like a lot of money, but if you guys built a limited trim of the prior generation with every option, keep in mind my tester has the Harman Kardon stereo and the sunroof package for an extra $2,200. That vehicle was around $30,700. So this model here being a little over 31 represents a pretty good deal. It's only like four hundred dollars more expensive it's worth every penny just as long as you guys are okay with not getting leather in this model which most of you could probably add anyways through the aftermarket but with all that said i hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2024 subaru impreza and this 2.5 rs trim if you're also looking to see the latest cars i'm testing be sure to follow me on instagram at redline underscore reviews like us on facebook and as always guys please keep subscribing to the redline reviews youtube channel for all the latest reviews thank you so much for watching i'll catch you all in the next video Thank you.